personal finance practice problem one note presentation auto operation cost calculation and projection get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance you're not required to but if you have access to one note would like to follow along or in the icon on the left hand side practice problems tab and the 6190 auto operation cost calculation and projection tab also, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our practice problems will be in the text area too with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. When thinking about projections into the future, it's often useful to break our costs down into two categories, that being the fixed cost and the variable cost. Breaking them down, in other words, by behavior, how the costs act, when there's changes to say an activity base, which in this case with a car might be the mileage, as opposed to just categorizing the cost in terms of what we use them for, things like just gas or parking and so on. We wanna be able to categorize them by behavior, tying them to an activity base, in this case with the car, that typically being the idea that if we use the car more, sometimes some costs will go up and if we use the car less, some costs will go down, whereas other costs will remain the same. We can, of course, the measure the increase and decrease in the use of the car with the term of the mileage. So that gives us our measuring tool. So as mileage goes up, that's going to be our activity base. We're going to have some costs that we can tie to it and have a similar relationship going up in a similar way and other costs will remain the same. This is a crucial concept anytime you're doing any kind of budgeting into the future. So you can apply this similar concept to a budget. You might use some other kind of activity base, which might be say revenue. You might say that some costs are likely to go up with regards to increases with revenue and down in relation to a decrease in revenue and other costs will remain the same. The classic cost that remains the same would be like rent. Rent doesn't go up or down with changes to the activity base of something like revenue. Typically, other costs, many other costs, a lot of other costs will kind of fluctuate, you would think, to some degree as revenue goes up and down. Now, note that this isn't a perfect kind of world, too. We have a thing like uh, that we call mixed costs, costs that have might have a variable component and then a fixed component to it. So in that case, we got to make kind of an estimate. We got to deal with the fact because we want to put them in one category, variable or fixed, so that we can make projections into the future. And the idea of this would be that then you can kind of, once you work this out into the behavior, you can make projections using like Excel, for example, uh, based on different, different scenarios. So in our scenario with the car usage, we can think about, well, what if we use the car more or less what will be the costs and we can figure that out or give an estimate a lot more quickly if we break those costs out by behavior by the cost of the fixed and variable costs so the first thing we need to do is kind of think about okay which costs will be fixed and which will be variable we have our list of costs up top so we might take like the current year for example with a with a car and we might try to determine what were our costs this year over the last year and then we might try to determine how many miles did we drive during that year and then we'll see when appropriate to try to see if we can come up with a relationship between the mileage and with the with the cost that then we can project and use that relationship that ratio into the future if we plan on driving more or less so we have the annual depreciation now depreciation is a little bit tricky because it's not a cash flow cost here we're taking the cost of the car the purchase of the car that we're allocating over the useful life of the car so on an accrual accounting system, it's an expense, but it's not really a cash flow type of expense. It's also something that's not generally going to change with an increased usage of the car or in relation to the usage of the car because it's usually based on just the number of years as opposed to a mileage depreciation method, which you could use, but most people don't. It's based on a number of years. So that would be more of a fixed cost, you would think, but not a cash flow cost. We got the current year's uh, loan interest the 750 so if we have a loan or finance the car it doesn't matter if we drive the car more or less that you know we're gonna have to pay the same amount of the loan that was related to the car the insurance typically is going to be basically the same as well for the most part we drive the car more or less we still got to pay the same amount of insurance generally average gasoline price per gallon so now we've got the 350 that then is something that clearly will change 
with the use of the car. So as we increase the use of the car, you would expect then the price to be going up and down in some kind of relationship to that. The tolls and parking, that, you know, you, you, you would think maybe that's like a one-time thing that we had tolls or parking, but it's likely that as we drive more, we're going to get more of those. So you, you could say that that would be kind of a variable cost. It wouldn't be like a one-to-one, -one, you know, a, as easy a, a relationship as you would think the gas would be, but you would think you'd get more uh, tolls and whatnot, as, especially tolls. I was thinking fees. You would think you get more tolls as you drive more. So annual mileage, we're going to say, is the 15600 So that's how much we drove, and we might then figure how much we drove in the current year and then vary that in future years if we think we're going to drive more or less. Uh, miles per gallon. So we got to basically think about if we're going to think about the price per gallon up top, we've got to think about, okay, how many uh, miles per gallon are we getting here? And we're going to say 24. Uh, license and registration fees are going to be the 148. That's something that's typically you would think would be fixed because whether you drive more or less, you're typically going to have the same license registration, oil charges and repairs. This is something that's not quite as easy to, to tie up, but you would think again, the oil changes uh, would be would be somewhat regular with the change to the the uh, driving. So that's going to be variable. So the projected miles are going to be 20,000. So we drove last, we're going to say that we drove 15,600, but now we're going to project out into the future 20,000. So how can I take my numbers up top and change them to the fact that I think I'm going to drive 20,000 miles uh, and all these costs are related to the car? Well, we're going to use the mileage as the activity basis. So how might that work? We're going to say, all right, the gas, the gas costs, the annual miles that we drove, the actual miles, not the projected 12, 15,600, and the miles per gallon is 24. So if we do our trusty calculation, 15600 divided by 24, we got 60, 650. So 650, and then we've got the average gasoline price per gallon, which is the 3.5. So if we take that 650 times the 3.5, we're getting the 2,275, 2,275. So we've calculated our gas cost. Now note that in the current year, you might you might have it going the other way, for example, as well too. You might be saying, okay, what if I look at my books and, and I know for last year, I've got the gas cost of 2,275 and I know that I drove the 15,600 uh, miles and the miles per gallon is, is around 24 then you can kind of back into you can back into the average gasoline price because the gasoline price might change you know over over the years so you could say okay well if i know this number if i know the 2275 what i actually paid last year and i divide that out by the the gallons the 650 that's going to give us our average price the 3.5 uh, per gallon you can also try to back into the miles per gallon here in other words if you knew the gas costs and you knew the cost uh the average gasoline price per gallon but you didn't know the the miles per gallon then you could be, try to back into that because again that could vary depending on the you know if you're driving more on the on city roads or stopping and going and versus and this and that if you so in any case, then we got the oil uh, charges and repairs. That's going to be the 850 that we're including here. And we've got the parking and tolls. These are the variable costs, the 750. And that's going to give us our total. So we're going to say we got the 2275 gas cost, 850 plus the 750. That's going to give us our 3875 of the variable costs. And then we've got the fixed costs the annual depreciation. Now that one's tricky because that could be something that's like a deductible item. It's an accrual item, but it's not a cash flow item, but it's certainly not a variable cost unless you calculated it by based on the mileage, which most people don't usually do. It's based on years. So the current year's loan interest. So we're going to pay the loan no matter what on that cost. The insurance is going to be this, the 940. That's not going to change with the number of miles and the license and registration is 148. So if I punch that in the trusty calculator just for the fun of it, 3200 plus 750 plus 940 plus 148, there's the 5038. And then we take our annual operating costs, which are the 8913. So if I took my 
3875 plus the 5038, we got the 8913 for the total costs. The miles that were driven, the 156, that is not the projected miles, but the annual miles. That would give us then the cost per mile, if I divide this out, the 15600, and that gives us, if I make this about uh, 0.571. So we can get we can get our cost per mile using that method, but it gets a little tricky if I use that number when I increase when I increase the mileage driven because now I've included in this and in this you could you could say okay well there's my cost per mile I can multiply that times the twenty thousand and you could to try to figure out what your costs are going to be next time, but some of these costs will not change in the same way right because you got the variable and the fixed costs. So, so that means if I took that and they got the projected miles of, of the 20,000, so times, take that times 20,000, and notice that this number is rounded here. So if I take that times 20,000, then I get the 11,427, 11,427. But that's not a very nuanced calculation because again, this kind of, when I increase the miles, Th this is saying that at the relationship is the same for everything, but it's not because it's it's we want to apply that relationship to the variable cost, but not the fixed costs really is the kind of that's the thing. So then we can go down here and get a little bit more complex on it. And if we think about each one of these items, we could say, okay, if I take my ga my gas costs to 2275 and I divide that by the miles that we actually drove, the 15,600, then we're going to get to the the cost of, or the ratio of that point one, four, five. So let's do that. We got the 2275 divided by the 15600. So we get about this number. And that should be something that should change with the number of miles. So if I increase the miles to 20,000, so times 20,000, that should be an appropriate kind of estimate for us because it's a variable cost. If I was to do the same thing for the oil, I'm going to say, okay, the oil was 850. We drove the 15.6 miles for it. So that's going to give us this ratio. So I'm going to say the 850 divided by the 15.600. That gives us this ratio and that's going to change in relation. So it would be appropriate for us to take that times 20,000 and that would give us the 10. Uh, nine zero and then we can take the parking and so on and do the same thing the tolls we would expect the tolls to go up in the same ratio so we're going to say the seven five zero divided by what we drove fifteen six so there's our ratio here for that particular item and if we take that times the twenty thousand that's going to give us the nine sixty two and that would be our variable cost. Those would be the costs where that would be appropriate to do that kind of thought process. 1917 plus 1090 plus 962, and that'll give us our 4968 on the variable side of things. Now you could also do that this way. You can kind of combine the variable costs together. You could say, okay, my total variable costs are the 2275 plus the 850 plus the 750, and so there's a total variable cost divided by the whole thing, divided by the 15.6, divided by the 15.6. And so there's our, our rate. And then multiply that times the 20,000, times the 20,000, and you get the 4968 uh, about here. So there's the variable portion. So that makes sense to do it that way for those, but not for these items, because these are the fixed stuff. So now the depreciation isn't going to change if I move, if I go from 15.6 up to 20,000, I shouldn't be increasing the fixed costs. So that should stay the same. Same with the, the interest. It, it doesn't matter if I drive it more, I'm still gonna have the interest that's gonna be the pay, the same. The insurance 950 is the same. The license and registration is fixed as well. So my total fixed cost, if I throw that in the trusty calculator, throw it in that plus that plus 940 plus 1480. Hold on a second, Miss Key. 3200 plus 750 plus 940 plus 148 and then 5038 and then if I add that plus the variable component 5968 we get to the 10,000 the 10,006 uh, and so you can see that that's 
you know, bit different than the costs up top. So it's useful to, for us to do these projections into the future using this kind of method. Oftentimes we can, and this works, the same kind of activity base will work uh, with many different types of things that you're projecting into the future. It's how you really generally want to be to be adjusting your costs to try to put them in categories of fixed and variable costs and then and then try to adjust them as as a relation to a change in some other thing and if you don't have anything else for like a business type of thing oftentimes you would use revenue right as revenue goes up and down some costs will go up and down with it other costs will not and that allows you to use a ratio to get an idea of of what's going to be increasing uh, and decreasing and, and you could do it anything that you could do a similar basis and tie it tie it to an activity basis such as in this case the usage such as the mileage of something you're going to usually get a more accurate kind of projection if you could break out your costs between the variable costs and the fixed cost and then think about into the future are you going to be using this thing more or less and then hopefully get a more a more precise number to help you out with with uh, with your budgeting and projections and whatnot